Hello teacups, what's brewing? I know we're not in the usual setup, but I figured I'd sit on my couch and be a bit more comfortable. <laughs> so it is Monday and I'm at home and it is glorious. <laughs> We've made it to the summer. So technically the school is still open. There are still teachers there. But what my school does is they say, okay, a week before everybody, the people who are final exiting this time can go because it enables them to get out quicker. It just happens that I'm not going for a while. So <laughs> it, it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling to leave all the uh, WhatsApp groups <laughs> for all the um, teacher communication and just sit with my coffee this morning and just enjoy it. It's been lovely. So I'm at home right now. I'm actually waiting for them to come and inspect. So if you remember, did I tell you this? I'm sure I told you this on one of the channels. Uh, we had an inspection, I think it was last week, it might have been a little bit earlier, just checking on the inventory in our apartments, making sure there wasn't any major damage, that kind of things for the like the tables and the uh, types of furniture we had. If anyone's moved any of, this out, of their own stuff in, it still needs to be available, that kind of stuff. So I went through that check and that was all fine, but there was an issue somewhere else on the compound where uh, someone had a crack in their ceiling and it caved in and they got hurt. Not seriously, but they got hurt. And uh, so the head of the school was like, right. Now this actually isn't the head of school's responsibility because it's the compound's responsibility to have their housing checked and this not to happen. Like the maintenance of the housing is their responsibility. But um, I, I get the impression a boot was inserted up their ass. So now <laughs> we're having the guys come and inspect and just make sure if there are any cracks in the wall, because you know, sometimes a house settles and you've got cracks, um, that they get plastered up, they get painted over, because they usually come in and repaint over the summer. Um, I haven't done that recently because I was here last summer, because that was when I escaped England, if you remember. <laughs> Uh, so they're going to come and do the checks and just make sure, you know, if there's damage, how deep the damage is. I've got a couple of tiles um, in my kitchen where there's a crack uh, moving its way through. So just how significant the damage is and making sure that all the maintenance is done over the summer before new people move in for the next academic year. So after they've done that, though, I thought I might. This sounds an odd thing to say. I feel like making some cheese, which... Is, is a weird sentence, but there we go. <laughs> so uh, as part of sort of my plan for the summer, I have to kind of give myself my own routines because when I'm stuck without a routine, uh, I go into quite a bad headspace quite quickly. So I give myself a few days break, that's absolutely fine. But once we hit about a week, things start to get dicey. Like I go feral very, very quickly, I start, uh, sleeping all day, being awake all night, just really terrible habits. Um, it's really bad for my mental health in general. And it's really easy for me to get depressed when I'm just not sleeping at the correct times and that limits my interaction with people and all the other stuff. So um, I made like a meal plan because I was looking for my grocery shopping. Uh, there's a shop here on the compound, but it's closed down. Or at least I think today or tomorrow is the last day, something like that. Uh, they're getting a new one in, but it takes the new one like a month to set up. So we're going to have no store on the compound for a month. So when it comes to my meals, now I'm going to have to do an online grocery shop. Oh, I could go to the hypermarket, it would be no problem. But I like knowing exactly what's in it. And I find that I tend to stick to a budget, stick to better eating when I'm not there with all the temptations of things I hadn't planned to buy around me. So... I've ordered a grocery list, but that meant that I had to plan out my meals for the week. And the, I was looking for just inspiration online. So I'm kind of bored. I get stuck in ruts with food really easily. And I don't mind. I don't mind eating the same thing over and over. But I've, it's the first day of uh, the holiday and I just want to clear the cobwebs out. And I was like, oh, we've got time. We've got all this time. Let's just, let's see what we can make. It will be fun. So I did a little search for meal plans and looked at some of the meal suggestions. And one of the suggestions was uh, cottage cheese bowls, because I tend to stick to eggs for breakfast, but it's quite repetitive. Uh, moving them to lunch, that'll completely change my life. <laughs> but I was like, ooh, I don't often eat cottage cheese, really, but it just struck me as being really nice. So 
I, when I was doing my grocery shop, I had to look, because the hypermarket, I took you there once, so I have a video somewhere on channel of me in the hypermarket. It's quite large, and if, the, if a food is going to be available, it's probably going to be there. Turns out, cottage cheese as we know it in the Western world, as that kind of lumpy, kind of wet cheese that you, you eat that's got really good protein, doesn't exist here. It's not a thing in Saudi Arabia. You can get Egyptian cottage cheese, um, which comes kind of in a log, and then you press it and it kind of crumbles. It's a lot drier than the cottage cheese we're used to in the UK. Um, a little bit more like, I, I know someone who eats like Eastern European cottage cheese, and it's the same thing. When I lived in Japan, and if you got cottage cheese, which was quite rare, um, it was the same thing. It was dry. It didn't have the, uh, the wetness to it which is what dry is, I don't know why I needed to explain that to you, but there we go. <laughs> so I was a little bit annoyed is a bit strong of a word, but I was like, ah, and then I looked, I was like, hang on, I, I know how to make things. So I'm, maybe I can make this, it's quite a simple one, you know, because it doesn't use, uh, is it called rennet? I think it's called rennet, I could be wrong. Sorry to anyone currently screaming the answer at the screen, um, but, you don't need it for cottage cheese. All you need for cottage cheese is to add an acid and some salt for flavour, you know? And before anyone in the comments comes for me and says, that's ricotta, you're going to get ricotta. Ricotta, because the article I looked at for cottage cheese answered this question for me. <laughs> ricotta apparently means recooked. So you, if I have the whey, which is a byproduct of this, um, of this process, I can cook that down, I can add acid to that, and that would be ricotta. Apparently that's the difference, but I've got a feeling there's always one or two of you that are like, actually? And it's actually really informative for me, but this is something I know. <laughs> I only know from Google, but I know it nonetheless. So I just thought, well, that seems pretty simple. I've got some vinegar. It's not white vinegar. I've got apple cider vinegar in the, in the fridge, not the fridge, in the cupboard. Um, I imagine that has a slightly different flavour profile, white vinegar would be more neutral, but the point of it being acid to milk, I think the reaction would work just the same. So we're going to try it anyway. If I lose out, then all I've lost is a little bit of milk, which would have been, well, a lot of milk. It's like a gallon of milk. I was like, oh, okay. Converted it to litres, I've got two big bottles. But if I lose out... I'm losing out on less money than finding imported cottage cheese would probably have been. So it's an experiment, it's fun to do, and that's what I think I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna um, go dig out my big, I've got a very heavy pan because all my others are cheap and crap, <laughs> because that's the way I go. Um, but I've got a very heavy pan that I'm gonna um, fish out. I've ordered some cheesecloth, which came today. And we're going to see if we can uh, if we can do a thing. So I'll bring you along. Okay, so a problem I have is that I have very, very limited counter space here. So I can't actually push you back any further than this. But I'm just going to show you really quick. Um, I've just got some milk. Oh, let's turn around so you get the English size. Got some fresh milk. It's full fat. Um, each of these is two litres. I've been told I need a gallon, which is apparently... 3.79 liters so i'm just going to pour out 200 milliliters of this so that i know that these two together are enough and then we're going to pop them into here and we need to heat it up until it's just below boiling apparently it's like i'm not very good with fahrenheit 190 fahrenheit it's 88 centigrade when it's converted because i looked into it so not quite boiling but enough <laughs> which is the terribly accurate measurement I'm using here. So I was trying to re-angle the camera so that it would um, <laughs> it would give you a better shot. And then as I did, it must have just come unjimmied from the top of the, of the tripod and it shot across the counter and nearly fell down the side of the cooker. And it didn't have the case on because with the case, which is quite a heavy duty case, um, it's slightly too big for the tripod. So I was like, ah! And now we're going to be doing things by hand because I, I learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so this has actually rubbed off all of the measurements because it's old and needs throwing. So I'm just going to measure it to be um, 200 milliliters and then I'll know that it's pretty much okay. Eh, close enough. I'm just going to put the milk to one side in for a minute because once I've finished doing this, I'm probably going to make a cup of coffee and I can use it in that. It's fine. Okay, so we've got this nice heavy-duty pan that I usually use for soups and stews. 
I'm just going to pour all of this into here. Um, I may have greatly underestimated how much milk this was going to end up being. We obviously won't get as much cheese out of this, but it's a lot. <laughs> So last week I was clearing out a couple of my drawers and I had like my big long plastic spoon and my big long wooden spoon and I was like, I never use these, I just get rid of them, they're quite bulky in the drawer and I tossed them because I'm leaving soon. <laughs> this week, now, the only thing I've got to stir this milk with is a metal spoon on the pan. So there we go. Don't come for me, I'm aware. I'm aware, I know what I did. Also the heat settings on my stove are literally one, two and three. <laughs> stove so you have to wait for it to heat up and it takes quite a long time so I'm probably just gonna hit it in the middle I'm gonna turn it on to three just to heat it up otherwise it's gonna be here forever and then uh, I'll just turn it down to two so it's a little easier to control but it's not exactly what you'd call a precise instrument <laughs> okay I got interrupted by the inspection team but they're gone now I think they were a little concerned to see how much stuff I had on the side of my uh, table as they came in but it's okay uh, so as you can see, well, you might not be able to see, hmm. there's a little bit of steam rising up from it now and it's starting to get a little bit frothy and bubbly just right around the edges. So I don't think we're a million miles away from being at about temperature. I'm just very carefully stirring it so that it doesn't burn to the bottom at any point because like I said, my, uh, my stove is not a precise instrument. So I'm just going to leave this go a little bit longer and then we are gonna add some vinegar. Okay, I think we are about where we need to be. So I'm just gonna flip the heat off. I'm gonna remove it from this top. So I have 190 milliliters of vinegar here, which seemed like a lot until I realized exactly how big this pot was. So we're just gonna pour it on in. I'm gonna stir it a couple of times and I'm gonna leave it for 30 minutes. So just to make sure the vinegar runs on through it <laughs> just sour it all down and once it's all dispersed look at that that's gross but kind of fascinating <laughs> i've got a lid for this part so i'm just going to put the top on and i'm going to lead it for 30 minutes to keep forming okay let's call a spade a spade we appear to have failed <laughs> so it just seems like i was told to leave it for half an hour and i thought more would form but it's very, very tiny and grainy, which might just be, you know, that's how it works out sometimes. But there's just not a lot in it. There isn't a huge amount of uh, product in here. I mean, it is very tiny. Maybe when strained it would be more, but I was expecting to get more out of it. I'm just, this may be a terrible mistake. I'm reheating it right now. I've only left it for half an hour. It wasn't cold or anything. Uh, just to see if I can encourage it, because the only thing I can think of, well... Anything. There are two things. One, um, it could be to do with perhaps the way milk is processed here. I don't know. I don't know if it has a different processing, um, a different processing process. I don't quite know what I'm saying. I don't know if it goes through different processing here in Saudi or not. Because uh, I know, like, I usually get UHT mil milk and you can't make cheese out of that. So maybe it's something similar. Um, or two, maybe it wasn't quite hot enough when I started the process i'm not sure so we're gonna try if it doesn't work it doesn't work i feel like we might be at the point where we just call time of death on this but i'm gonna strain it just in case committed to my mistakes we see them through to the end i mean technically it's making something but this does not seem enough for how much milk went into this I saw another video on youtube where he put in far less vinegar and he added some cream now the recipe i saw said that the cream was optional you could put it in at the end to try and give it that more kind of liquid texture if you wanted to and i forgot to order cream so i just was like oh it's optional it's fine maybe what i might do next time i do a grocery order which will be in a week or so because i actually know a little bit over because i don't have groceries coming till thursday i might order milk and the cream that i forgot this time and then see if that makes a difference so i'll try less vinegar more more cream and give that a go and if it doesn't work again we'll just call it a, we'll call it a loss <laughs> okay and here we go and i've got this and i've got this so it's something like cottage cheese i don't think the yield was very good but again that might have been my milk i did use full fat but it might not be enough 
I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this this week. I just needed it for a couple of breakfasts, so it's fine. Uh, it's not really worth the amount of milk it took, I don't think. But there was another recipe on YouTube that used less uh, vinegar, just used a couple of tablespoons of acid. He said lemon, he also had vinegar. And it added cream into the pot before you started curdling it. So I think what I'll do, I'll use this up for my meal plan because I'd planned to anyway. Uh, and I don't believe in wasting it if it's edible. Uh, I'll probably make, I saw a recipe, it's a bit like caprese salad where it's instead of mozzarella you use the cottage cheese but it's meant to have balsamic vinegar on it and given that this has a slight vinegar taste I think it would be fine for that purpose. Um, but I'll try the other recipe next time I get the milk in and if it doesn't work after that we'll just call it a day. <laughs> I'm so sad. This here is just full of water. Not everything, but you can see it, it's starting to catch it again. There's a vent under here that has um, water coming out of it. So it was leaking for like a week or two and I was emptying this egg tray every day. But the guy who handles repairs came and saw it the other day and he adjusted the temperature in the freezer and unplugged it for like three hours and then plugged it back in and the leaking stopped. And then I got up this morning <laughs> and the uh, water was back. So he's gonna come at some point later and he's gonna change the fridge out for me. I've got the chicken defrosting right now and uh, I bought a thing, you guys. Hang on, I'm gonna have to show it to you. Look, it's one of those um, overhead tripods. So I'm gonna put my breakfast in here and see if we can film a thing and be a fancy lady. So I'm quite excited about it. I want to... Uh... I want to do uh, a few probably budgeting videos when I get to Oman just because whenever I get to a new country I don't know exactly how expensive certain things are I don't know how much is reasonable to spend as you go through so I tend to do a spending tracker and just keep track of what I'm buying in that first month because there'll be a lot of one-off purchases uh, like I've got to buy a washing machine when I get there things like that so uh, I thought it'd be really cool to have like an overhead one so I could have the the budgeting sheet in front of me and maybe just record that down. I know not everyone is interested in that stuff, but I like watching that kind of stuff, so. <laughs> So one of the things I'm doing this summer to keep myself busy is um, making some more resources for Teachers Pay Teachers. I opened up an account, I want to say the beginning of this school year, but then just couldn't keep up with it. So I made a couple of resources, but nothing much. But while I've got the time, once they're made, like that edition of the book will go for a while. So uh, if I'm talking about language arts, obviously there are other materials as well. So I figured it would give me something to do and if someone buys them, great, it's another source of income. But once they're made, they're made and people can buy and download them. So it's probably what I'm going to do over the next week or two. So I'm quite frustrated at my school at the moment. Um, it's about quarter past 12 on Wednesday and I left work on Sunday. Sunday was the first day of the work week. So all the final exeters went then. And uh, the school is meant to give you this pack of documents. And in the documents, there's uh, a reference to say that you worked here. Uh, there's your final exit visa, uh, like the paperwork for that. And there's uh, certificates for workshops you did while you were at the school, your professional development stuff. So they don't give these to teachers until the end of the contract. So then if you do a runner, you don't get the benefit of everything at school, you know. So um, that's fine. I understand. The pack was meant to be ready when I left on Sunday. And their whole attitude to it is basically, well, eh, you can come whenever. And I'm like, no, my last day of work was Sunday. Why should I have to take a car back into school to get the things that should be ready? But when I went to check on it on Sunday, they said, actually, it's all ready, but we're waiting on a signature because it has to be um, signed by our head of school. And that's basically my boss's boss. So my boss 
didn't give the paperwork with the actual reference and stuff in until half an hour before the end of the school day because <laughs> I was done and I went and saw her secretary and I was like hey what's going on uh, for her boss's boss and um, so I went to HR they said look everything else, else is ready we're just waiting on that and you know we'll contact you so fast forward it's now Wednesday tomorrow is the last day of the work week and then teachers aren't in school so I've just emailed them and I'm like hey hey where's my stuff because I'm so frustrated with how they just they just don't organize themselves well enough and this is the reason I'm leaving the job it's this I shouldn't have to stress about it and chase it to get the things that should be automatically done with every final exeter and some people have received emails already um I have a neighbor a couple of doors down that received hers yesterday. So I don't know if they're just saying, well, she's staying later, we don't care, we won't prioritize her. And I understand that people who are leaving sooner should be prioritized. But at this point, you're already three days late and everything should have been done. So what is the holdup? So I've just emailed HR. I have a delivery tomorrow that's going to make it a little bit difficult to go into school if they suddenly call me. And if they suddenly call me and I can't go tomorrow, the school is then, I mean, I imagine that some administrators will still be working because the school won't be entirely closed in case anyone comes in to sign up. So I guess that's what they're banking on. But this shouldn't be an issue. I shouldn't be dealing with this. You know, it should already have been done. And I'm just getting more frustrated as time goes on. It's little things like this that just make it difficult to work there because it permeates through everything. This lack of organization it goes through all of like the academic work we do and the administrative work behind the scenes. It's always last minute in a panic instead of, well, this is something that should be automatic so we can plan it in advance. There's no reason for people to be running back and forth. Ugh. Now that I don't work there, I can be more frustrated about it. Um, there was another change as well that irritated me a little, but I can understand the reasoning for it. So I'm, I'm less pissed off about it, but... They were going to pay me a lump sum of all my summer stuff um, because that's the standard for people leaving. But because I'm not actually leaving the country, I'm staying in my apartment. They're just going to pay me monthly the way they pay anyone staying for the summer. And uh, then I'll get my bonus, which is half a month's salary for every year I've worked. I've worked for three years. I'll get that in August about a week before I leave so that I have time to transfer it out. But they knew they were going to do that and they didn't tell me until the day before I left, uh, the day of me leaving school because I went down to HR and I was like, hey, people have been paid and I haven't been paid. What's going on? And it would have been so simple to explain it to me because it does make sense because something I hadn't considered was that the AC, I'm pointing to the AC that you can't see, uh, the AC and the utilities that um, I pay on my apartment get deducted from my wages. So it makes sense that they would have to pay me monthly because they can't deduct if they've got no money coming to me. You know, they don't have control of that. And I would pay it, but I'm sure there are people who would just skip out on the bills and they have to protect themselves, which is fine. I just kind of wish they had told me. It was an irritation more than anything, but an understandable change. So I was like, okay. But that could have been communicated really easily and it just wasn't. And I'm like, why am I having to dig around to find out information? I swear to God, and it's always after one of these things. Every time I would go to HR and try and fix something that they just hadn't told me, the conversation would always end with, you sure you don't want to change your mind? And I'm like, now? Now is the time you're asking after you're just screwing me around? No, the more you speak, the happier I am to be going. So I'm still waiting on um, the guy coming with the fridge, so I'm just having some eggs and cheese for lunch, and then I'm going to message him and see if it's okay for me to go to the gym if he's not going to be here for a while. Okay, gym done for today. I'm just gonna walk home. Gym's only a couple of minutes walk from my house, so it's not a big walk or anything. I'm gonna drink a ton of water, grab a quick shower. So I'm just going to cook all of these so that I can have it in the fridge ready for other days. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing for dinner. I've got some also that I was going to use for uh, salmon salad um, tomorrow. No, day after tomorrow, but I've actually just found some couscous in my cupboard that I didn't realize I had so I'll probably use that for the salad instead and then today um, I'm gonna have chicken probably just this jar sauce and maybe some also I might just uh, cook it up and bake it all in a dish
You know you were in lockdown too long when you get absolutely affronted by unexpected visitors. I've had three people ring my bell today and you heard that bell on one of my reacts. Like, it scares me every time. Um, but some of the things were lovely. I had one of my co-workers came in because one of the Arabic teachers had bought me a leaving present, which was really kind of her. Oh, my Arabic teacher's lovely. I sent her a message after saying thank you. But I've just had a lovely lady um, my neighbour left a cage outside to be picked up by the trash men and then they didn't pick it up because it was too big. This is the cage. So she used to keep hamsters in it, yeah? And it opens up at the top here. It's, you know, it's a good... Whoops. Well, you don't need me to open it. But it's a good... Um, it's a good animal cage. And the lady came and buzzed my door. So she had buzzed the door next door and gotten no reply because between me and the next door there's a storage house. They just use it to keep spare furniture and stuff in so no one lives there. And then she tried buzzing the next door neighbour and um, she final exited. That was the lady, I think I mentioned it at one point, but I went and said goodbye to her the other day. And um, she was like, my daughter has rabbits, we've been looking for a cage, can I take it? I'll go get my car right now. Sorry for the sudden cut off, I thought it was her, but it wasn't. So anyway, her daughter has rabbits, she's been looking for a cage, and then just, there it was on the side of the street. Of course this is going to start now. This is the uh, the mosque nearby that calls out prayer time. Don't know if you're going to be able to hear me over this, I have to listen to the clip after. Oh, sorry. Just ideal for all things. But anyway, she was terrified someone was, if she left, someone was going to take it, and I was like, it's been outside for a week, no one's taking it, but I'll keep an eye on it. So I'm just waiting for her to come back now. Well, that just worked out really well. Um, she came back with her car to pick up the cage. And then after trying to get it into the back seat, we realized very quickly this wasn't going to work at all. And she couldn't, um, <laughs> she couldn't, she couldn't fit it in a car. And then we were like, maybe we can ask maintenance um, because they have vans that they go around the compound with. And as we said it, <laughs> A maintenance van came around the corner of the of the little street and we were like, excuse me, and just flagged them down. God provides. <laughs> so this was the present the uh, Arabic teacher gave me. When I say Arabic teacher, I don't mean teaching Arabic to me. I mean the teacher assigned to my grade level for the kids. She's absolutely lovely, pleasure to work with, always incredibly helpful, thoughtful. I'm really going to miss her, but she's completely surprised me with this. It was so kind of her. Okay, I think we've reached the end of the day. I'm going to watch a little bit of YouTube and probably curl up in bed with a book. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye bye.